Again, hi, I am Elena Israelian, a software engineer slash data scientist. Uh, this is my teammate, Hovanes Manushan, he is a data scientist. And Andre Abrahamian, our other teammate who is not here because of the army, uh, had also his big contribution in this uh, capstone project, uh, which is about disease classification on encrypted retinal scan images using neural networks. And uh, here we discuss the concerns that were discussed a little bit uh, ago about privacy of the patients. Uh, yeah, so uh, why is this important? As the field grows up and uh, machine learning is uh, widely used in uh, medical, uh, medical challenges, uh, we have the problem of keeping the privacy of the patients. So uh, a lot of machine learning models require some private data like gender, age, or retinal scans. Uh, which are extremely uh, vital in identifying uh, people because it uh, doesn't change in the lifetime of a human and uh, it's very easy to identify a person with only a retinal scan. And uh, we can see that uh, like when we have a disease in retinal scans, they are really different from the healthy ones. Those are the first one is the healthy retinal scan. Uh, and those are uh, retinal scans of, disease, uh, of people who have a disease, like glaucoma uh, or other uh, diseases that affect the retinal and eyesight. Uh, so uh, to overcome this challenge, uh, we, we propose uh, encryptable neural networks and uh, before going into the homomorphic encryption and how to encrypt those data, uh, let's understand the overall schema of our uh, processes. So uh, before going to the model, we first need to uh, do an image augmentation because the data that exists in the open source is very rare because of again of the privacy issue and uh, we found about 3,000 images and uh, the problem was that uh, only a small percentage of it was uh, healthy patients so we need an augmentation plus upsampling uh, and then we applied different uh, pre-processing methods like retinal crop, for example, for those uh, black parts uh, because they were adding noise and uh, were not letting the neural network to learn. Uh, doing resizing because those images were huge, uh, 2,000 on 2,000 pixels. And uh, then applying normalizations because uh, our encryption schema that we will talk about is um, only working on small numbers because with high numbers, with big numbers, it causes big error. Uh, after uh, doing this, we can already apply our uh, vision uh, transformer model, uh, which also we will discuss. Mm -hmm. Homomorphic encryption. So for encryption, we decided to use homomorphic encryption. Uh, it enables to do some operation after encrypting the uh, data. For example, we have the X, uh, we have the X, and we uh, encrypt it, do some operations on it, we decrypt it, and we have the same data that we would have after applying those operations on the X, on the raw plain text X. Uh, and it is important to note that, <coughs> sorry, uh, it is important to note that homomorphic encryption only supports operations such as addition, multiplication, uh, the exponent operations, and dot product. So our uh, neural networks are also limited by those operations, and we should uh, consider the architecture choice. We, we should consider this when uh, choosing the architecture of the neural network. Uh, for the homomorphic encryption, we chose the Tensile module. Uh, 
if uh, anyone is familiar with this module? No? Yeah, so uh, this module uh, uses the CKKS encryption scheme, uh, which is uh, different from other schemes because it also supports the convolutional operation, but only for the first layer. Because what it does, it uh, converts the convolution operation to matrix multiplication, and then uh, uses the simple dot product uh, multiplication and uh, summation which are supported natively by the homomorphic encryption uh, to do the convolutional uh, operations. Uh, that is why uh, we chose it, because at first we were trying uh, architectures like CNN, uh, because it is the classic one for the classification, and uh, we needed this module for uh, that purposes. Uh, so uh, for the homomorphic encryption, uh, in the CKKS scheme, uh, they use uh, rings uh, and uh, uh, technical ring uh, learning with error, uh, which is basically converting the uh, vectors and numbers to uh, polynomials. And uh, also, uh, we we uh, try to minimize the numbers with uh, doing modulus operations and uh, to minimize the error when we have a ciphertext after the encryption. So uh, when doing those uh, plain text uh, operations, we can already encrypt those vectors and uh, do our computations on it. Uh, in our case, it will be the neural networks and uh, in general, only linear operations because, as I said, they only have the summation and multiplication in general. Uh, yeah, and then uh, the process needs to be decrypted so we can have the uh, plain uh, outputs of our neural networks. Uh, and about the architecture choice, Havanas will continue. Thank you very much, Elena, for presenting the first part of our slides. So in order to understand our architectural choice, let's first understand how the simple feed for neural networks work. So their basic idea is computing the linear combination of the input vector, input vectors, and, and then passing them through some nonlinear function to, uh, at the end, optimize the predictions of a model in a way that would result in uh, closer predictions to the original data. And the problem here arises when you try to perform nonlinear operation on, on your encrypted data. The thing is, the current homomorphic encryption schemes do not support any operations that are not representable by a polynomial. So this highly constricts us in terms of the choice of the architecture. As you can see, these are the most common activation functions that are used in practice, and none of them is exactly uh, it can be estimated, uh, can be like precisely estimated by a polynomial, and in fact, no such polynomial activation function exists that could uh, work, uh, that could properly work for uh, estimating complex decision functions. And as Elena mentioned, like we are unable to directly use common CNN architecture. And the reason is that uh, it performs the grouping operation and multiplies the weights on some parts of the data. So it uses the same weights on, the, on certain groups of the vector, which means we have to do the grouping within the encrypted vector space, which is currently impossible. And I think, oh, I also think that it would be impossible in the future as well. However, it is still possible to perform the convolution operation on the initial layer 
by by re by doing the grouping of your input matrix before encrypting and then and then performing the encryption afterwards and then you can simply represent your convolution operation as a matrix multiplica multiplication as you can see here okay so now we had a big problem we 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 need to make the encryption scheme operable on the neural networks however most of the operations on the standard convolutional neural networks are simply impossible so we had to come up with an architecture that is that is both very good in in real world applications and at the same time can be supported by our encryption scheme so we found the golden goose in terms of the vit architecture and the still uh, the uh, yeah uh, still most of the operations on uh, uh, the vit architecture with its plain form are not supported as you can see we've utilized the common pre-layer normalization architecture which works quite well both in for real world applications and is simple enough for our research purposes and uh, there are multiple uh, blockers in this even in this simple form first the layer normalization operation cannot be performed on encrypted vectors because it requires the inverse uh, and uh, inverse operation and square root both of which are not supported the multi-headed attention layer has a softmax operation which is again composed of exponentials and divisions uh, which are uh, and inverse functions which are again not supported and the uh, simple feed forward neural network would require uh, usage of nonlinear activation functions which are again non supported the biggest problem we faced was with the with the softmax layer uh, we are we haven't yet been able to solve this problem and this is our current research quest However, and the complexity of estimating the softmax operation is that a uh, simple polynomial approximation of the exponential function would result in errors which would skew the predictions of the encrypted neural network in a way that the results are no longer as accurate as desired and are not useful for practical applications. However, the other two issues with the activation functions and the layer normalization have been solved. The first one is the ReLU activation function uh, approximation, and this has been previously solved by other researchers by using the Taylor, a well-known Taylor approximation of the ReLU, which worked quite well in practice. And Elena will currently present how we solved the normalization layer issue and the results that we have obtained. So back to the normalization layer and encryption. Uh, for the normalization layer that is used in the vision transformers, uh, we have uh, simple operations such as dot product for calculating the mean, uh, minus and dot product operations, uh, for calculating the variance, but we need to uh, calculate the mean over uh, sigma standard deviation, which requires division and square root operations. So we decided to approximate uh, the function 1 over square root of x as a whole with the Remes algorithm, which is an iterative algorithm to uh, find the polynomials for the nonlinear function and for a specific range. Uh, we looked at our neural networks tra already trained on the plain text uh, data, and we saw that our data is mostly in the range of 0 to 16. So we decided to approximate our uh, polynomial function for this range, and we can uh, see that the original function, which is the orange one here, and the Remes algorithm uh, approximation uh, are really close and the error we can see that is less than 0 
uh, which is uh, really good in terms of uh, the complexity of our neural network and uh, uh, homomorphic encryption uh, constraints. <coughs> so overall, uh, we used our normalization layer in our whole neural network and we did we had our accuracy uncompromised um, we yeah we can see that uh, our uh, vision transformer model had an accuracy of 83 uh, percent when comparing to the baseline accuracy uh, is much higher 70 the baseline is 79 percent and uh, there is this um, competition, open source competition of, uh, that, that is working on the disease classification, uh, which is called RIAD. Uh, their winner accuracy was 88%, where they used CNNs and uh, mostly convolutional neural networks. Uh, so the, our main achievement is that using the polynomial approximation of the normal normalization layer, and using it in our whole neural network, we had our accuracy uncompromised. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. <laughs>